Huh. Yep, it was a very, very, very interesting presentation. The presentation of the Honorable Priest Isaac had presented on his platform coming up to Marcus Garvey's uh, Earth Earth Day, Earth Strong, birthday, as I want to say, a born day coming forward, you know, 17th of August. Yes. So it was called, you can check out the video on Honorable Priest Isaacs on his channel, his YouTube channel is called um, Marcus Garvey and Selassie, Who This Who? So it popped up because I have him on notification, you know? And notification did pop up on my phone and I saw that, oh, he, he, he uploaded a, a video. So I was doing some other work trying to get our live stream and everything to let everyone know we've been having certain trouble with um, blog talk, radio, and therefore some of our live streams for the Friday most recent, I think that was, what was the 13th? Was that the, the 12th, 13th, 14th? I think it was the 13th, 13th um, yeah, the most recent one. That, it wasn't Friday the 13th, was it? <laughs> you know, just on that level there, was it something like that? Um, or was it the 14th, um, 13th, 12th, let's get 11th, 11th of um, August 2023, and then our After the Shabbat podcast that we did for Re'e, 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 Hebrew right there, Re'e, it's a command. When said at a normal rate, you would say Re, Re, Re. Which is interesting for those who study ancient Semai Tawi, Sema Tawi, that after the 11th dynasty got to be more popularly known as Kemet, would know that that's the more the correct enunciation for the one they call, um, that some refer to as the the sun, the sun nature. <laughs> the sun nature, you know. People want to talk the sun god and this god and that god. But it's interesting that the people who didn't even say it like that. It's just like the Europeans and other um, would-be pseudo-scholars have kind of, you know, characterized ancient um, Tobian, Tobia, the original name, the ancient, the archaic name of Ethiopia. Then later on, when the Greeks came forward, there was a king. One of the ancient um, narratives from the Ethiopians themselves is that there was a king named Tobias or Tobia in the more Hebrew, Tobia, right? And the Tob means good, Tob, Tob. Martin Hebrew would say Tob, Tob, but Tob means good. So we have Tobia, which is a name that means like the good Ya, or, or the I am good, the good I am, in that sense. When we talk about, well, he who be, who he be, or the good he who be, but the land of Tob. Well, now we say that's ancient Tobia, is ancient Ethiopia, the continent, as we would call it, of Africa, but when we say the continent of Africa, Africa and Arabia is very much linked. I was telling a brother earlier, I was saying that when you start to study some of the, um, what the Sheshu, Sheshu, Sheshu Metuneta, is it the Shesh Metuneta or the Sheshu Metuneta, right? The hieroglyphs, one of the phrases that we've been studying, because trying to find a more proper name to refer to the hieroglyphs. But this is about Marcus Garvey right here. Just one of just reason with ones and ones because when I saw that video pop up, the Honorable Priest Isaac, I said I got to check it out. And so after, you know, preparing certain things, we're going to be updating the stream and the platform, have more dialogue conversations, even going through certain um, critical or critique and critical analysis of things where you can see it more on the screen and live time. Once can call in, you know, be honorable. You know, or respectful, you know, and you know we can we can reason, come make a reason, you know, we like the reasonings that don't always agree with what ones might perceive to be our perspective, because a lot of time people perceive our perspective to be one thing, they think like we are religious, <laughs> some things we're religious in, you know what I mean, but in all things, we seek to be really just, you know if you if you get it, got it, good. Ah, Atem Avin, Atem Avin, Atem Avin Oti, you overs, you overs, I, all right, Gabachu, you know, Yem Lachu Neger Gabachu, do you understand that little Hebrew there, little Royal Amharic? But on Garvey, want to go to a more fuller reasonment. We've touched on this here, Lapta and I, um, co host, 
Yes, Rai Seymour, duly elected chaplain of First Union, local number one Ethiopian War Federation Incorporated, constitutional membership as a whole, local number one. We'll be having just vibes and reasoning. I know we've touched on this before, kind of briefly and in our reasonings, but we haven't really presented it again more fully because when we first came across the information, right, concerning certain things that Marcus Messiah Garvey was alleged to have said. Now, we get to find out from further study that no doubt he did say these things, and these things at the time were responded to and commented on by Katamawi Hada Selassie's Imperial Majesty's Special Emissary to Black America. <laughs> Let's keep it black, to Black America. There's a reason for keeping it black. Black America, Black America. Garvey was bringing forth that baptism. Marcus Messiah Garvey. The Rasta man, the elders taught I and I, and they also showed and proved to I and I. They taught I and I these things, and then they presented the proofs, you know, positive for us to know the truth, to know the truth for ourselves. That Marcus Garvey, in this time, in this time, in this event horizon is our. John the Black Baptist. Now I say it like that. Our John the Black Baptist. And the elders that say that Marcus Messiah Garvey is I and I John the Baptist. As we study those things and even more things that were provided to us, you know, for the youths, you know, we had much more to go on than many of our elders back in the days had to go on. Things that we heard about, we've got we've gotten a better clarity about it. We've gotten to trust many things we heard, but then also in verification, to verify, to know the truth of this matter. So Marcus Messiah Garvey in this time is our black John the Baptist, right? Or our John the Black Baptist. Now what's baptism? Anybody know what baptism is? Baptism is what they call immersion. Immersion. Basically immersion. Well, Immersing in water. It's almost like most folks prior today take showers, you know? Not too many people take baths. I heard a one say on some platform, oh, I don't take baths, I take showers, you know? And other people agreed with that, right? And even ourselves, yeah, showers are the easiest things to take, and most of us probably may don't really take baths, baths. But what's the difference? Because when you're baths, baths, Bath, bath, England. <laughs> when you bath or bathe, it's more that immersion. You you you're in the water, and the baptism is is that going down in the water. It comes from an ancient Hebraic and Judaic of the tribe of Yehuda, Judea, because Judah was the last tribe standing. The ten tribes had gone in. The ten little niggers, ten little niggers, ten little. The ten tribes. You remember the ten tribes? That's why I said the ten little niggers. Many of you remember that ten little niggers thing? Yeah, but but there was the Negus tribe. The Negus tribe remained, and that was Judah, Yehuda, as well as Benjamin. That's coming up to the historical time of what's known as the first century time. You know, the New Testament Bible time, right? And then we have in the opening part of the Gospels we have John the Baptist, and you know Johannes, Johannes, Hamatbil, Matbil, um, Johannes. Um, Matemku, you know, the baptizer, going forward, preparing. What, what, he, what did he say? He said he's a voice, a voice. Marcus Messiah Garvey, that voice. They have recordings, you know that? There's recordings that have been preserved of Marcus Messiah Garvey, of his voice. And his voice is, wow, that's, that's that voice. Remember John the Baptist testified? Now, we can go through the verses and scriptures, so, you know, grab your pen, your paper, your sacred scripture. Bring a willing and attentive. If you can't be attentive, then uh, repentive. <laughs> when I say repent, have a change of mind. Think differently. That's what Garvey helped to baptize the so-called Negro people in. Now, there was already a movement of Ethiopianism. Some call it Ethiopianism. Of course, we burn up the ism, schism. But, you know, for every rule, there's an exception. Right? Now, we don't make that exception. We talk about Rastafari is Rastafari or Ras Teferi. Remember, it was I and I, LOJ Society, Ras Yad, and that formed our brothers and sisters that Rastafari 
head creator meaning is only half the truth. Right? Teferi is not creator, but Fetari. Fetari. When we talk about the royal Amharic language, the Lisana Nagusa Nagas, the language of the King of Kings. Yes? Check. So he's the one that baptized right, black people most universally. Universally. That means here, there, and everywhere that his voice. That voice crying in the wilderness could reach was baptizing our people who were under all these bywords. Nigger, Negro, colored, this, that, the next. They called us every name other than a child and children of the ever-living God. But look at God. Look at God, as the ancients would say, the ancestors. Look at God. Look at God. <laughs> So even in the time of the second advent, the real second advent, right? Now people get confused because Christ, according to even the Bible, New Testament, John's gospel, right? Not John the Baptist, don't get one John confused with the next John, don't get one Judas or Judah, Yehuda confused with the next one. But John the Beloved, often he's called John the Beloved. He also known as John the Revelator, right? One that's a scribe, both the Revelation. Right, the book of Revelation as well as the Gospel of John according to John as well as the epistles, those letters that we have in the New Testament of the Bible. Right? In his book, and his book is a very important book to go to, especially concerning this Christ matter. See, Christ is Messiah. Messiah, the first Christ in the Bible was Aaron. Aaron. Aaron, you know Aaron, Old Testament Aaron, brother of Moshe, of Moses. Yeah, he was the first Christ. You say, no, he wasn't. Well, what does Christ mean according to the Bible? Well, when you scroll to New Testament, we have found the Messiahs, <laughs> which is being interpreted Christ or Christos. We found Messiahs. Messiahs. They spell it in the, they take the Hebrew term Moshiach, Messiah in the English. They add an S because that's the Greek, right? That's the Koina, you know, the, the New Testament time, like English. So for everyone who says, oh, well, the, the New Testament is in Greek, what language do they speak? Hmm? If they're making claims to being, being comedic or ancient, do you speak that? No, you don't. Making claim to being a Hebrew or Israelite, do you speak that? I'm not saying you speak a couple of words, but you know what I'm saying. The majority of what we're saying is in English. So let's not be hypocrites, all right? So that, are we going to dismiss everything written in English? Even when in 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 100 years, our people are speaking their more original languages or their more their languages? Are we going to dismiss everything that our people, before they could speak that, were writing in English? Or in some of our people speak French. So we're going to dismiss our French scholars our French testifiers, our Spanish scholars, our Spanish testifiers in a future time if we're speaking, you know, real biblical Hebrew or we're speaking royal Amharic or w w whichever of our Afro-Semitic or Shemitic languages. Now, I know some may have a problem with the whole Shem, Shemitic thing, but Shem, Edomawi Hala Selassie, is the Hashem. What's the Hashem? Go ask an Orthodox Jew. Right of today, nowadays, like mostly, like say a European Jew, because they're more disciplined in the orthodox ones in some studies. We need to get disciplined like that, right, within the studies. But let's get to this point here. So the first Christ in the Bible to say that is to say the first Messiah in the Bible, the first one anointed according to the Scripture, right, was Aharon, was Aaron. Right, Aharon, the brother of Moshe and the brother of Miriam. Yes, and the first Christians in the Bible, right, when I say Christians, I'm going to the Hebrew meaning, the first Messiahites, Meshachim, Meshachim, if you want to get into the Hebrew, or Nazarenes, but, but, but let's not go to touch on the Nazarene just yet. Let's first stick to the Messiah aspect. We want to clarify this Christ thing. Because the Christian world is in crisis because they don't really know who Christ is. They think they know, but they really don't know. See, they say Christ, and Christ is a title that means anointed, anointed, anointed. 
So even when Yeshua Hanotri, Jesus of Nazareth, Ye Ye Nazaretu Jesus, when he went into that synagogue, you remember? In the Gospels in the New Testament, he went to the synagogue of his hometown, Nazareth, right? Notri. He went to the synagogue, he went up to read the, the Haftarah, like we do, you know, Rastafari, sabbatical, Rastafari, Jews, Rastafari, Israelites, Rastafari, groundation. And now Rastafari Yeshiva, we read the Torah, then we read the prophets called the Haftarah. Right? Then we read the Brit Chadasha, the trinity of readings from the Torah, the law, direction, instruction, the five books. Then the prophets' readings, right? which is from the prophets mainly, but sometimes from other areas, Shemuel, Samuel, can even be Yehoshua, Joshua, or Shoftim, or Judges. Right? The Judges are the Elohim too. I just want to point that out, right? Hebraically speaking. But Yeshua, Hanotri. In the Gospels, in the synagogue or the Hebrew church, see the synagogue was the Moed, according to Torah, the Moed. Later on, later Jews would call it the Knesset, right? But you have the word synagogue in the King James Old Testament. Go look up what is that Hebrew word. The Hebrew word is Moed. It's the same word that's used for the feast days, the Mo'edei Yahuwah, Mo'edei, feast of, right, the appointments of Yahuwah, of he who be who he be, ha'kadosh baruch hu baruch Hashem. He be who he be. It is what it is. So, Christ is a title. In fact, I think I need to do this right here, just in this right here, because we don't want you to be like Eve. <laughs> All right? We don't want you to be like Eve. Right? You know, so-called to be like Eve, me, right? But accept what I'm saying. Credit what I'm saying is true because it is true, right? But check it out for yourself, right? That's what you're to do, right? So you can know the truth for yourself, right? You know, we don't have no right spec. If somebody says, yes, Ross Adonis is telling the truth. Ross Adonis know the truth. Yes, I, uh. And then you really don't, they don't really look it up for themselves. You know what I mean? Remind me of that woman that was chasing behind the disciples and Paul got it, you know, pissed off of her, right? And really she had like a, a spirit, like a demon in her. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even though when you read the narrative, she seems to be bigging them up. <laughs> Dry snitching, right? John chapter 1 verse 41, it says, He first findeth his own brada, his own brav, right? Shimon, Simon. And saith to him, We have found the Messiah. You see what is the Messiah? Which or Firebunner which? Who is being interpreted the Christ? Look at the word Messiah. The G3323. Messiah. Let's go through it. Messiah. Thayer definition says anointed. What does the first entry say? One, the Greek form of Messiah. So the Greek form of Moshiach. So the Greeks came across Moshiach, then they say Moshiach. Well, let's say Messiah. Why? Because that, that ach, that ach, that ach. They don't have that ach, right? That's like you know when they say chepra, chepra, chepra. They don't have that. That's a very ancient African Shemitic sound, right? Found more in the east than the west, but be that as it may. Secondary entrance is the name of Christ. What with the name of Christ? <laughs> Maybe bugging out sometime. That's what you have to be able to think for yourself. The name of Christ? The name of Christ? Although the name of Christ in the New Testament revelation is Yeshua. It's not Yahweh Shai. I. See, they read the Ein in the Hebrew as I. Because that English stuff. You know, Sister Kalanji said one thing that is true. He said that English will mess up, you know, like, you know, like messing up people's minds. That, that English, too much of that English. Remember Wooly Lynch, How to Make a Slave, Controlled Language? Go check out the Wooly Lynch papers and zoom into the section that's called Controlled Language. That's why people are suffering right now. Right? Whether they're in the comedic studies and to the Hebrew biblical studies, or uh, even if they say they're African and pan African, asking what language have you begun to attempt to master? I don't mean that one has to be fluent, fluent, but 
just by learning one of our own languages improves our way of thinking. For real. I, I, I must admit that right there. It, it, it changes the way we think. Because why do they say this word? And then we start to see how they use this word in, in the context. It, remember in the ancient Egypt, there was a whole thing about the opening of the mouth. We're going to have to do a video on that. Why learning Amharic? Right? Why learning the basics of Hebrew for us as the once lost now found is the opening of the mouth. See, in ancient, in ancient Smai Tawi, Sama Tawi, the two lands, Hebraically Mitzrayi, after the 11th dynasty known as Kemet. The, the ritual for like when ones and ones passed on and they went to the underworld, that they would be robbed, or they would not be able to speak. So ones on the side of the living would go through certain rites and rituals to help them open up their mouth. And so the opening of the mouth was that when the daily departed loved ones in ancient Mitzrayim found themselves in the Sheol, Hebraically we call the Sheol, they call the Duat, Duat, right? They found themselves in the underworld. They could be able to speak those words, the Heka and the Chaylaka, the words of life, you know what I mean? And be able to overcome, you know, when they are tried before the Yisr. The Yisr, or Osar, they would say, the Yisr, you know, in the, in the whole rite and ritual, right? So this is what we have too. Because what does Negro mean? Negro is, is that dead black? The dead blacks, right? Remember we talked about Marcus Garvey is the John the Black. Got to emphasize that more, baptized. You see, the Ethiopian World Federation Corporate was the first organization that proudly, right, referred to us as black people. Garvey, the Universal Negro Improvement Association, was baptizing my, the black peoples of the world, particularly in the Western Hemisphere. That was the epicenter, like the stone in the pond, the epicenter, the ripple waves reaching to all four corners or four wings of this earthly plane. But what was he saying about Ethiopia, Ethiopia, Ethiopia? Right, Ethiopia. <laughs> See that Ethiopia, back in the old dictionaries, is what you'll find when you looked up Negro. It said Ethiopia, and Ethiopia said Negro. See how they change that up now? And some of the Israelites, a lot of day ISUPK, the rest of them, they going after the Zondervan, the Zondervan dictionary. Hmm. So what they did is they changed the definitions in the latter day dictionaries and got many of our Hebrew Israelites confused. It. Not confuse, but confuse it. Confuse id, 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 id. Id, the subconsciousness, you know, and the Freudian speculation. Or ed, short for education. Got them a confused education. They know they're Israelites, but they don't know what's right to know as Israelites. Right? Are you not as the children of the Ethiopian, the meal children of Israel? So John the Baptist, John the Black Baptist was baptized in black people in black consciousness by baptizing the people in Ethiopian awareness. And that's what he found up here in this North Country. One's like Reverend James Morris Webb. He's the first proclaimer. You know, you had many prophets even in old Israel. There was some prophet that came before the next prophet, but maybe there was only to speak to these and those over here. A next prophet it rises up. And here's the former prophecy, the first prophet, and they begin to say that word of the former prophet, and they are the ones that might get the credit for it because that might be their calling. A voice, a voice, a voice crying in the wilderness. Right? John the black baptizer. <laughs> preparing ones, right? You know, preparing ones to meet the king, even the king of kings. You know, it reminds me of some of those old Negro spiritual wells. You know what I mean? Preparing to meet their king. All right now, here's where some of y'all might get a little off-ended. If I say to you, well, John the Baptist in the Bible lost his head. If I say to you, in a sense, so did he. Marcus, Messiah Garvey. He said, oh, well, no, it's not a diss. Remember the brother already did the video uh, Priest Isaac, Honorable Priest Isaac Already did the video, check it out Marcus Garvey and Selassie Who this who? <laughs> who this who? Right? <laughs> you know I have to laugh for a moment Because once we've done over us when we say He lost his head Before Yeshua HaMoshiach Before Jesus 
of Nazareth before he was baptized and before he started his ministry. That's that's that was his his name, Yeshua, and he was a Yeshua of Hanotri of Nazareth. And Nazareth is not the same as Nazarite. Let me just let's get that right. It looks it looks that way in English, but remember we're talking about linguistic literacy, linguistic science. Remember Wooly Lynch, how to make a slave. Remember this section? Controlled language. This is what our people are suffering from. Controlled language. Right? So when I say Aaron was the first Christ, people say, what? And his sons were the first Christian. No, 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 that's not so. You see, the Christians, they were called Christian in Antioch. Yes! They were called Christians in Antioch, but John 1 and 41, before the Acts of the Apostles reference, it says, we, let me read it again. He first, not second, not third, not fourth, he first findeth his own brother, Shimon, and saith to him, who? To his own brother. We have found the Messiah. Well, he didn't say Messiah, as it's written here. He said, we have found Moshiach. We have found Moshiach, which is being interpreted the Christ. Okay, let's get into a little bit of Hebrew called people are in crisis right here. All right, not knowing who. <laughs> All right, Christos. All right, Christos. What he said to Shimon, Achiv, Achio, Yomer, Elio, right? Matzanu, Matzanu. We have found Matzanu, Matzanu et Hamoshiach. Matzanu et Hamoshiach. Matzanu. We have found et Hamoshiach, the Messiah. Mm hmm. Asher, <laughs> Asher, Turgomo, 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 Turgomo. Asher, that which, Turgomo, that which is being what? That which is being interpreted by Christos. So it's almost like speaking. Right here is John the Beloved, John the Revelator, who is writing this. This is the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 41. So he basically is giving us what, 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 um, who's the he right here? So you can see who the he is. And one of the two which heard John speak. Now notice, the John here in verse 40 is John the Baptist. Who's writing it is John Mark. Or John the Beloved. That's who's writing it. Speak and followed him. And what was Andreos. And Andrew. Shimon Petros's brother. Right? Notice right here. If we scroll up here. If we scroll up here. If we scroll up here. Right? If we scroll up to verse 35. Again, the next day John stood and two of his disciples. This is like to say, and the next day Marcus... Messiah Garvey stood and two of his followers, two of his Garveyites. And looking upon Yeshua and looking upon Rastafari and Mahala Selassie as he walked, as he was walking it out, walking out the way, he says, Behold the Seha Elohim, behold the Lamb of the Elohim, Alahayim, Hailehim of the Almighty Ha'el, power. And the two disciples heard him speak. They heard John the Baptist, like ones who heard Marcus Garvey speak. You remember, look to Africa, so forth and so on. And they followed Yeshua. They followed who? Yeshua. Just like many of the disciples of John the, ba the black baptizer followed Kedemawi Selassie, followed Rastafari. Remember, even before 1930, we had that word already going on in America. Let's let's note that, all right? And where did Garvey say what? Let's note that as well. And also, who was the forerunner, right? The African American, the Black American Reverend James Morris Webb, who said, "Look to Africa, where a black man would be crowned king. In him, you'll find the Redeemer." Garvey spoke about the day of redemption. Being either here or near depends on who's quoting that. I'd like to get a more firm quote of that from more authentic scholarship. But often many things have been passed on, you know, and we have accepted that in faith. But the scholars amongst us have gone on to, you know, seek to verify. So I wanted to 
verifiers, right? So what we can verify is that before Marcus said what he said, but does that pit Reverend James Morris Webb against Marcus Messiah Garvey? No. Can you say, well, 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 Isaiah said this, but uh, uh, Ezekiel said this, and you want to pit Jeremiah, Jeremiah, Hermes against Isaiah, or against Amos, Amos, or against no, you can't you can't play that because they, they work for the same master, right? But then Yeshua turned <laughs> and saw them following and saith to them, "What seek y'all?" And they said to him, "Rabbi," which is to say being interpreted master it's almost like when people say why do you call yourself rastafari rabbi or well, why do you call these ones like dr ben and the rest of them master teacher <laughs> huh where dwellest thou and he saith to them yeshua said red letter come and see right remember his majesty presenting that invitation right to any of the ones africans and black people who want to come to the kingdom the kingdom of the king of kings even in the time of marcus messiah garvey and the unia in america that's what that video presentation of the honorable priest isaac brought forward marcus garvey and selassie who this who all right he saith to them come and see they came and saw where he dwelt ones like rabbi arnold josiah ford he is one that went and saw and he was the musical director of the unia that's where the Rastafari, I and I, we get the Ethiopia, the land of our fathers, the land where the Elohim, Elohim, <laughs> Hilehim, love to be. Where he dwelt and abode with him that day, for it was about the 10th hour. Interesting thing about the 10th hour, what time of day was, was the 10th hour? Do you know what time of day was the 10th hour that was about 4 that was about 4 p.m. the ninth hour is 3 p.m. see Ethiopia keeps that biblical time it's not the way people look at the clock now the clock now is actually mirror image backward the clocks now it's, it's weird the 3 o'clock hour 3 p.m. is actually 9 right um, um, 9 a.m. is actually 3 so the fourth hour, I mean, the, excuse me, the 10th hour would be 4 p.m. That's what time it was, right? And then it says, one of the two which heard John speak, John the Baptist, like to him Marcus Garvey speak, and followed him, was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, find of his own brother, Simon. So, wait, Andrew, Andreas, and Shimon, they were brethren, all right? Blood, yeah? And say to him, we have found Moshiach, all right? We have found, remember in the Hebrew right here? We have found Moshiach. What did he say right here? He said, Matanu, Matanu, I and I finding et Moshiach. Now, the commentator or whatnot, right? Now, we don't know whether John wrote this in here or maybe others wrote later on this in it, which is being interpreted. Because for Hebrew people, if you say Matzano et Hamoshiach, they understand Matzano Matzano et Hamoshiach. For real, <laughs> can't you know <laughs> Emet Emet? True Bemet 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 in truth for real for real yo. Mm. Now notice that's 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 that right there. So Messiah, right? Anointed. It's not the name of Christ. It's actually a title, right? A title. Christ is the Greek way of saying Moshiach, which is the Hebrew for anointed. According to the Torah, the biblical scriptures, the first one that was anointed and therefore was in the sense of, quote, Christ sense, because Christ is the Greek way of saying anointed. It's like English, I'm saying anointed. What is Messiah, Moshiach? It's anointed. If we were speaking Greek and you asked me in Greek, well, well, what does Moshiach mean? I would have to say Christos. If you're a Greek speaker and you say, oh, 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 anointed, you get the idea. Just like if I say Moshiach and you don't know Moshiach and you say, what does that mean in English? I say anointed. It's a title, a title of priests, some prophets and kings. The origin is the Hebrew origin. There we go. Moshiach. 
Not Moshiach, not Moshiach, but Moshiach. Moshiach, Moshiach, right? Anointed, anointed one of the Messiah, Messianic Prince. Notice it says the B, the kings of Israel, like Edomawi Hala Selassie, who is the king, was anointed and crowned king of Israel. Yes, he's king of kings of Ethiopia. He's king of all the kings of Ethiopia, but he's king of Yisrael, king of Israel, 1930. And that's before there was any such entity known as the state of Israel. Check, check. That would happen, that would happen 18, that would happen 18 years later. <laughs> what, 1948, 1930, right, 18, was that 48? Yes. The high priests of Israel, like Aaron, Cyrus is one of the only, Koresh was the only Gentile. He was the king of Persia, Medo-Persia, right? Who allowed the Yehudi, to, the black Jews to come back from Babylon and to reestablish their, their presence in the land, right? What, what we call Jerusalem, rebuild the temple and all that. But we have to touch on that too because there's old Jerusalem, Right? Across from the Horn of Africa and there's New Jerusalem. <laughs> People don't get those things. Right? The patriarchs as anointed kings. Right? So right here, Strong's definition, anointed, consecrated person. Anointed, consecrated person. So Yeshua HaMoshiach, we're saying that Yeshua is that Messiah that the Yehudi, the Jews of the first century was looking for. Like Edomawi Hala Selassie, he is the black Messiah. Right? That the called, chosen, and faithful were looking for. Right? And he fulfills that word of the second advent. Now most ones who are Christian or allegedly uh, alleged to be so, they got it a little bit wrong. Why? Because they're listening to the counterfeit Christians, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, the same people who told you that, that, that you come under the curse of Ham when there's no such thing in the Bible as the curse of Ham. Find me the verse. Verse and chapter, please. In the King James Version. Thank you. Consecrated person. A king is anointed. Like the king of kings. The king of Israel. The king of kings of Ethiopia. And Amal Hala Selassie. A.K.A. the Rastafari of all the Rastafari. Anointed. Anointed in the crown. You hear Rastafari saying, He was anointed, anointed, anointed. Stop. First thing first. He was anointed and crowned. We like to say he was crowned, crowned, crowned. I got so excited that I was saying anointed. That's what we should be saying. But they say he was crown, 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 crown. No. According to the order, the royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews, that's the order of Melchizedek, he was anointed and crowned. The queen, his wife, his consort, she was crowned, not anointed. See, that's the difference. But she was crowned very same day. All right? But that anointing that he has received makes his person sacred. And whoever will seek to injure him will not go unpunished. Whether in this life or the world to come. Right? Check. So a king, a priest, or a saint. Specifically the Messiah, anointed Messiah. See, Christians begin to think, many ones and ones that only Jesus, as they say him, right? Only Yeshua is anointed. Then how be it that we're Christians? How be it we're Messiahites? They called us Christianoi, the Nazarene. Why? Because whenever you say, well, where's your, your king, your God? Where's this Christ? Where's this Jesus? Christ. We would say, the original first century would say, he's in I. When you see me, you see the Father. That's what we call chosen and faithful. Rastafari would say and should say. But you can only say that if the true spirit, the irits, as you say, be in you. So, right here, 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 we're not going to be long with this. We already was long with this for a moment. We're going to just seal this up because I just want to point attention to a very excellent video, right? I really enjoyed the presentation, going through what people said and what people wrote, you know, like trying to cause division between the baptizer right and the one to come the one who he pointed to is the one to come but just like john the baptist did with yeshua right remember later on what he did when he said are you the one that we look for do we seek another based on the evidence there were things said this is why we say that garvey lost his like john the baptist's head the head is that headship 
Even when the Ethiopian World Federation incorporated Dr. Malaku Emmanuel, Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan. I'm going to have to do a short on that. I got to be reminded. Let, remind me to do a short on the Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan. Right. <laughs> right. Malaku means his angel. Emmanuel means God is El. Ha El. Hail. The power, the Almighty is with us. Imanu, El, Imanu, with us, El, Almighty. And Bian, Biane, Bayin, is a decision. It's a sentence, basically the sentence of a judge. You know, like when somebody goes to court and they're tried and things get weighed and then they, 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 there's like the judgment and then there's the sentencing. That's what we're speaking about when we say Biane, beyond the sentencing, right? So as he came forward, the UNIA began to, like, like John the Baptist said, he must increase, but I must decrease. But the work is already done. It's that work that's already done. And I'd like to point your attention. We're not going to go through it right here. I'd like to point your attention to Matthew chapter 11. When you rightly understand Matthew chapter 11, as we came to rightly understand in the light of Rastafari Kedemar Halasalasi revelation, it, it clarified a lot of things concerning Garvey. It actually made more fulfilled because we heard some naysayers, deniers, haters of Rastafari saying, oh, Marcus Garvey, he's not John the Baptist, da 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 right? And some mind of mine, you know, besides their faith and what they knew, they couldn't go beyond that. We can go beyond to defend that he is Right within the revelation, within the um, metaphysical, <laughs> hello, <love> I son, <laughs> in the metaphysical revelation of things, right in the actualization, right in the actualization. Behold, the black John the Baptist, the John the black baptized. Okay, he black baptized black people in Ethiopia consciousness. And that Ethiopia consciousness is that stepping stone to the true Israel and Israelite consciousness. Are ye not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? Some Israelites will tell you, well, look, that's because the Ethiopians were wicked as uck. That's why that word is said there. Hmm. Okay. Did, did the Almighty liken anyone else to Israel? Remember, he chose Israel apart from everyone else. But yet in Psalm, how about Psalm 87, verse 4? With Ethiopia, this man was born. And why? The Messiah, this a, a special man. In fact, even in the Hebrew, it doesn't even say man. It says this. Because this. Is he man? Yes, he's man, but more than man. Ethiopic Enoch tells you the first and the second advent. Right? The first advent, Yeshua HaMoshiach. The second advent, weep not, behold. The line of the tribe of Judah has prevailed, which in the good is, is Moa on Bessazem, Negeda, Yehuda, the conquering line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, to do what? To open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. So that headship that John the Black baptized and Marcus, Maga Marcus Messiah Garvey lost, right, was part of the work that had to be done. He's still there in the history. He's still there in the prophecy. You know what I mean? You can't shake him from his place. Remember I said to read and study Matthew chapter 11? Hopefully we'll go through Matthew chapter 11. Both what chapter 11 says, because there in chapter... Remember, chapter 11 is bankruptcy. It's like In Babylon, they call it like chapter 11. Well, Matthew chapter 11, it kind of doves, doves with the latter days of Marcus Messiah Garvey. The frustration, right? that even John the Baptist had. We, we could be personal about it, but we don't have to. Because see, the Moshiach spoke about it. See, I was at one point where I was about to say, I, I need to, you know, go after Garvey. And, I, and I'll share this. I know some of the Bobo Shanti and even some of the Rasta mind will be like, what? Yes, we was about to go there. And, I, and there might be some old audibles and videos where we did go there. Right? But we give thanks to the King of Kings and his Irits, because Irits clarified right, the true position of the matter. Right? Let's go over here, right here. This is a few ones right here. I want to show you this right here. UNIA. 
line let's go through this let's see right here young people that's a good one that young people one right the good one right we're gonna deal with a lot of these things in more details then you can come on the line and if you're respectful you know or you could be disrespectful right if you're on our line then we could always drop your call <laughs> You know what I'm saying? We're not really going there. You know, there might be time and occasion, but as one of the black elders said, he said, only with our peers. You know, you know, because there's a, a respect there. Okay, where's this one right here? I want to show you this one. And you, okay, here we go. This is what, for all those, this is what we're going to put on the table. Did Marcus Messiah Garvey say this? Did John the Baptist say, are you the one that we look for? Do we look for another? Notice, it was John the Baptist was the one pointing him out to everyone, saying that he's greater than me. He got a work to do. Garvey said certain similar things. But then we hear Garvey uh, allegedly saying this. When the facts of history are written, Haile Selassie of Abyssinia, what happened to Ethiopia? <laughs> we'll go down as a great coward who ran away from his country to save his skin and left the millions of his countrymen to struggle through a terrible war that he brought upon them because of his political ignorance and his racial disloyalty. Now, hot to fire bun if Garvey did say these sort of things. But then when we read what John the Baptist says in context, it was almost a similar thing. But then when we read of the grace of Yeshua HaMoshiach in addressing both John the Baptist, his um, emissaries he sent, and also the audience that was hearing all these things. We would like to seal up right here that a house built on granite and strong foundations, not even the onslaught of pouring rain, gushing torrents, and strong winds will be able to pull down. Some people have written the story of my life, representing as truth what in fact derives from ignorance something they just don't know lack of gnosis error or envy but they cannot shake the truth from its place even if they attempt to make others believe it now concerning what Garvey says here and what he says elsewhere we will bring up the emissary right to you know the emissary to black America, and that is Dr. Malaku Emanuel Bay, and he wrote about these things in that time. These things were public and were publicized, right? And we're gonna bring those evidence. It's gonna be something called, what's the article in the Voice of Ethiopia? Um, was Garvey um, faithful to himself or something like that? Was Garvey, is Garvey faithful to himself? We could ask the same thing about John the Baptist. But it was the grace of the Moshe Yeshua, the grace of the word of Haile Selassie in the flesh, Jesus Christ, right? That really caused us to look at this more gracefully, you know? Not, not to fall from grace, but to rise in grace, you know? Whether it was a priest, prophet, king, past, present, it was King David himself. We don't like what King David did in the adultery murder incident. But we don't deny that he's a great one in our story, right? And in our manifestation, actualization. Neither do we deny this concerning Marcus Messiah Garvey. But we're going to have to be mature in order to really face this and to put it in its proper context. So even though John the Baptist, according to the New Testament narrative, said what he said, Right? As what, what did Christ say? What did Yeshua say? He says, Bless is he who is not offended in me. Obviously, Garvey said these things. He was very offended. But you know who, who spoke to defend the king? Who's often never mentioned? Dr. Malaku Emmanuel Bayan. Right? Or Bayan, if you please. He is the one that addresses that. Right, within the voice of Ethiopia, historically speaking, in the time that it was spoken. A lot of people can say this today in 2023, but we're gonna go way back to the 30s. We're gonna go way, we're gonna go way back. That's when it was said, way back to the 30s. Right? And we're gonna see what 
His Majesty's special emissary to black America said concerning the whole situation of our John the Black Baptizer. Because that he did, he did, he did. Right? Did he do it alone? Of course he didn't do it alone. But he was that appointed one. He was that voice. There was the Reverend James, uh, James Morris Webb. There was others. They were known. They were doing things. There was a whole Ethiopianist movement, that Ethiopian conscious and that Israelite conscious. That was, there was always Rastafari even. There was Rastafari black Americans. They were like the Rastafari black Jamaicans or the Rastafari black Ethiopians, if you want to say it like that. They didn't have locks, right? They didn't have beards. Some of them didn't have beards or locks, right? But that wasn't the qualification of Rastafari. So some of you youngins, you think, oh, you have dreadlocks. and So you see a lot of dreadlock people now. Majority of dreadlock people you see now are not Rastas or Rastafari. <laughs> They're not even bandwagon riders. There's people who like long hair, you know? Or, or, you know what I'm saying? So we have to get to a higher you know, a higher level and not fall for the okie doke and ought to fall, you know what I mean, from, from grace, right? A lot of the black conscious elites, they even fell asleep. They don't dismiss the other truths that they have, have stood on or have stood for. That's why I, I just love what our brother priest, you know, said at the end of, near the end of that video, Marcus Garvey and Selassie, who this who, you know, because he basically just gave a, a view on certain ones and ones. You know, we have to be mature. You know what I mean? And have to say certain things. So if Garvey did say those things, so what? Well, so what? M Malako, Dr. Malako Manuel Bayan addressed those things back then. What did he say? That's what we need to hear. We need to hear the rebuttal. You see, but what did the Messiah say concerning John the Baptist? And also, how gracious was Ketamawi Hala Selassie, even when he visited, you know, Jamaica. You know, what did he do? He laid a reef. He could have said, this man said this and that against me. Yeshua could have said that about John the Baptist. He said of men born of women, there's none greater than John the Baptist. Now think about this. Yeshua, wasn't he born of a woman? According to the gospel, yes, he was. This Mariam, St. Mary. So how could he say of men born of woman that there's none greater? You see, you see that graciousness of Yeshua in Matthew chapter 11? But the least, right, in the kingdom. He basically said, blessed is he who is not offending me. He said, the least in the kingdom, the least is greater than he. Because he said the principle is, blesses is he who's not offended in me. So he still has that greatness of men born of woman, John the Baptist, by the very Messiah, Yeshua, HaMoshiach himself. But he said that even the least in the kingdom is greater than he. The least, who's the least? Who's the least in the kingdom? It's you and, you and I. It's I and I. I and I. I and I is not as great as Marcus, Messiah, Garvey and all that. You know, he's a great, a great one. We might be great in our ways, but he was great in that way. No, th nothing can take that from him. Nothing can take it from John the Baptist. You know, we say, as we as Rastafari say, seal up. Seal up. It's sealed up. It's sealed up already. He did that work. It baptized black people in black consciousness that they were able now to accept being called black people, especially when the Federation come forward. All right? Remember, John the Baptist had his organization. You know, many of those from his organization start to follow Yeshua. Same thing happened with Ketamal Hada Selassie, the Rastafari, right? Same thing happened there. Some people clearly can't see that. They must be blind. You know, do they have to spit on some clay, take some clay or whatever, put on their eyes? I don't know if that would work for them. But if we can open the, the blind eyes to see the truth, all praise be. Hallelujah. Rastafari. Shalom, Chavarim, Shalom. This is Ras Adonis. This is Yad in here. L O J and I and I approve of this message. Stay tuned for the follow up.